October 9, 1975 was an auspicious day for John Lennon. He had been living in New York City with wife Yoko Ono for five years after the breakup of the Beatles. First at this apartment on Bank Street in Greenwich Village, then at the prestigious Dakota Building on the Upper West Side. And on this day, John Lennon was finally getting his green card. He had been living precariously in the city he loved, hounded by the FBI and Richard Nixon, and threatened with deportation back to the UK. It hadn't been an easy five years, but it all changed on his 35th birthday in 1975, when his lawyer, Leon Wilde, called him with some very good news. Dad got a phone call from the clerk of the Court of Appeals that the case was won. So I called John at the time. I said, John, we won our case. He said, what do you mean we won our case? I said, we won it. He said, Leon, I'm just on my way out of the apartment. We're going over to New York Hospital. Yoko is there already, and she's going to give birth either tonight or tomorrow morning. On that day, John had his own birthday. He had a beautiful boy, and he won his green card, permission to stay and build his beautiful home in the United States. With his green card in one hand and his new son, Sean, in the other, John takes the moment to reassess his life. He stops the drinking and partying that had characterized his lost weekend the previous year. In fact, he stops touring and making music altogether. And a few weeks later, he calls me and said, Leon, I'm closing my office and I'm going to spend my time raising my son. And after Sean was born, he really started paying attention to raising Sean, uh, to living a sober life to accepting the responsibilities of being a parent. My kid is more important to me than my career, was what he was saying. And that was a very, very radical and progressive idea for 1975. After 15 years in the limelight as one of the most famous people in the world, John Lennon was ready for a long break. And for five years, he disappears completely from the public eye. And when he returns to music in 1980, it's with a sprawling double album called Double Fantasy. It's a charming, tantalizing, warm, mature, interesting, Beatlesque, and yet outside the Beatles type of sounding record. And it's just, it just eats up radio all fall. The John Lennon Renaissance was in full swing, but it would come to a screeching halt on December 8th, 1980. So we're standing in front of Dakota, which is on 72nd Street on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, right next to Central Park West. And this is where John Lennon settled, lived as a house husband and a father to his second son, Sean, for the last five years of his life. This is also where he was gunned down, right in front of his apartment. On his way out to the studio, uh, earlier that day, he signs an autograph for a young man who's waited outside in front of Dakota, right here behind me where I'm standing. When he returns in his car later that evening after he's done working in the studio, he gets out of the car, that same young man calls his name, and he turns to look, and this guy pulls out a revolver and puts five bullets into his back. Yoko Ono is steps behind him, watches her husband fall from these bullet wounds. And he crawls his way into the front foyer of his apartment building, and a patrol car picks him up and they rush him to the hospital, but he's obviously, he's losing so much blood. And the policemen in the car report that he's conscious in the car, but that he's, he's stunned, that he is absolutely dazed with surprise at what is happening to him because he knows he's dying and this was the last thing he ever expected, to be riding this big a wave of a comeback and then to die in the middle of it all, right on his front doorstep. Very hard to capture in words what it means to stand here as a Beatle fan because you're, you're overwhelmed with emotion. It's very moving, it's very... Um, it's very unsettling to think about how it all happened and, and why it was so unnecessary, it was such a huge waste. A great spirit had been robbed from the world in the person of John Lennon right here on this spot, right on 72nd Street. News of John Lennon's death sends shockwaves around the world. No one could comprehend how such a beloved figure who promoted peace and abhorred violence could be gunned down so senselessly outside his own home. On Monday night, I was in my dark room 
when I got a phone call and uh, I heard that John Leonard had been shot. And I remember sinking down to the floor and just sitting there trying to figure out what to do, how to fix it, how to make it better, and there's no way to make that better. Well, I certainly miss John Leonard every day, yeah. When that kind of a pain happens, when somebody, when you lose somebody really close, it's like being cut very, very deeply. Um, and it's very, very painful. But eventually, the wound will heal. But there'll be a scar on it. And it'll look like it's healed. But if you touch that scar, you feel the pain. When I heard that like, John had been shot, it was a shock. I mean, to lose a friend is one thing, but in the way he, he, he died, no, it was devastating, obviously. It's just such a tragedy that Sean and Julian had been, had been deprived of their father in the same way that John had been. It was just a history sadly repeating itself. A terrible thing to happen. Yeah, we were in shock. We were, at that point, very close friends and it, it affected us terribly. John Lennon remains an unimpeachable icon. A few hundred yards from the site of his death is a permanent memorial in Central Park, named after his beloved strawberry field in Liverpool. strawberry fields and as you can see after all these years he's still bringing people from all over the world from all different places he's bringing them all together imagine I mean to me I'm just here as a fan you know I mean I don't come here every day and even coming here on a random day like today and seeing everybody here it's just like I don't know it's moving it's so powerful you know it's honestly overwhelming you can feel the energy of one man and one person who you know made so much beautiful music I think everybody being here and coming together is exactly what John Lennon would have wanted I think that he meant something to everybody here and that's why they come here you know it's wild that music can have that much of an effect on that many people. That's why he was such a powerful figure. And that's why, you know, some were scared of him because that's a lot of power to have. It's hard to think of a musician who has had a more profound impact on the world than John Lennon. And the iconic locations that moved his life story forward have become pilgrimage sites for music fans around the world. Mendips, his childhood home. Strawberry Field Orphanage, St. Peter's Church Hall, site of a legendary meeting with Paul McCartney, 105 Bank Street, and the Dakota Building in New York City, where he was tragically killed at the age of 40. Now on Celebrity Page.